And he is up against the blue Zerg in the bottom right hand side. It is Raynor. It's a pretty good player. We're looking at not just a pretty good player, but one of the best, if not the best, and I guess looking to prove it by having the most points by the end of this week and going into the weekend. We are expecting Cyril and Rainer, I think, both to top their groups. But I guess if that if that doesn't happen in one way or another, then then Rainer could uh, either lose that top spot or, or Cyril could continue being farther away from it, I suppose, right? But it's one of the uh, the storylines, I guess, of, of this group. Otherwise, it is just, you know, who is going to be able to uh, escape out, move on to the playoffs this weekend. It feels like we're almost kind of back to, like, some of our, you know, previous uh, offline setups when it's not a four week long tournament. So I'm like a little yeah. disoriented talking about like, guys, it finishes this playoff this weekend, but uh, that is the case. I know it's so weird to go back to being like, we start on Tuesday and we end on Sunday. It's like, wait, we end on Sunday? Not like three weeks on Sunday? Um, I, I totally get it as well because you're right. We have had just some long seasons and even like season finals, which were like one week long. We had all the pre matches to the season finals, right? So it still had that build up. It's kind of it's kind of fun just to kind of dive in. You have a group, some play, some players are out, some players are through. It's uh, yeah, it's exciting again. Yeah, uh, it certainly does kind of raise the stakes, right? As opposed to a mm -hmm. a group play, which is fantastic, and the players love it, and it's really awesomely done for for a lot of the dream hacks. There is like one critique, and that's kind of like, oh, I didn't you know think it was that important to watch the first day or the second day. Well, now literally every day is important. You want to actually be watching these games, not just because it is like a break it, make it or break it. But because the games have been really cool, I mean, yesterday in particular had some really fun games that I can only hope uh, today lives up to. And maybe because there's not PvP, it won't be as crazy. But I don't know, TVT can actually be quite a trip. We'll be seeing some of that later on. For this TVZ, we do have some basic openers. I mean, they're spawning on Light Shade, which has been uh, kind of tore up. Okay, hey, Reaper does die. Um, kind of notorious for some some roach all-ins earlier on in its life. But, you know, another thing that we haven't really talked about is I guess we're approaching the later parts of the lifespan of, of the map pool. <laughs> and that'll be changing sometime this year. Yeah, no, I mean, I was actually... I'm wondering when we do get a map pool change. Are we going to keep it until Katowice? Are you going to... Are you going to switch it up before then? I almost... I'm almost a fan of both ideas, right? Because we've had this map pool for a while. Um... But it would also be nice to kind of just keep the consistency for the for the finals of the ESL year, right? Hey, this is a mm -hmm. big problem. That Reaper went down, as you mentioned, the six links out. So there was six links, he lost one. So he actually comes out and he gets himself a Marine here, Reino. And this is just already just punishing Bunny for making the mistake of losing the Reaper. You're not meant to let these links get across the map. And now you're going to lose, what, one SCV? Very nearly two. It will be two. That is just <laughs> damage you're not meant to take. And Reino... You can't lose a Reaper against him. Little things like that are actually a big deal. And now Bunny's already two SCVs off from where he wants to be. And again, against Raynor, that's just making your uphill battle even steeper. You can see it in Bunny's camera, actually. Kind of like a, like a grimace type thing. He was also not very happy with how that went down. I mean, against other players, they've maybe tried to be greedy and only make two lings or the more typical four, and they don't bother trying to go across the map, even if they do get the Reaper, but... Rainer, well, even when it comes down to a small number like six lings, can still do some incredible damage uh, after killing a Reaper. That was not the start that Bunny was hoping for. He's quickly looking for some revenge, however, getting a drone and forcing a couple of score crawlers. But Rainer is not going to over invest into the defense here. Just puts his queens back into position and has still like a you know, kind of like a small number of lings actually. But if properly used, should be all right. Yeah, I love that he goes for the lair early. I always think that the lair early against the Banshees is just so useful, just having the Overseer up, um, being able to kind of like move around between the bases against the Banshee rather than just having to sit on a Spore Crawler. So that seems great. And he goes into that Bane Nest as well. And because it's Cloak Banshee as well, you can also get away with the faster lair without falling as far behind on upgrades as you might otherwise. So I really like this setup for Raynor so far. Uh, which is pretty standard of all things as well. And it's the same from Bunny, just Banshee's into Stimpak now, right? Wants to just make sure he makes a, a nice strong transition into Bio. And at some point here, we'll be hoping to get a bit of damage done with the Banshees, at least pick away at a couple of those drones. And that's where it really comes down to just how good can Reno's defense be early game, set the stage for the later stages. 
Yeah, earlier on there weren't that many lings, but even without that many, actually, the Helen just on creep trying to dive. Maybe still feeling that, that pull to make up for the early game, which is too bad because now he only has two Hellions. It gets a little questionable uh, taking your third as fast as you would want because the Banshees are, of course, still trying to do some damage themselves. And it's hard to blame Bunny for opening up with Banshees. Um, you know, if you if you knew for a fact your opponent was going to be aggressive, was going into a faster lair, then maybe you wouldn't want to get Banshees. But since it is Lightshade and, and the Roach attacks are still pretty popular and Rainer is definitely capable of doing them, uh, that, that safety is, is quite good to have. Unfortunately, if it's not that, then actually getting damage with Banshees against the world's best Zergs, it's kind of unlikely. Yep, they are just so good at defending it, of course. And it's kind of what we see here. And he's even got Queens trying to flank the Banshees from the left-hand side. Get out of here. I mean, the problem is going to be this creep spread, right? It's already seeming to be all over the map. Reno's feeling very confident. He takes a fourth and then a fifth hatchery right away. That's great because if one of these bases comes under attack and is in a little bit of trouble, you can very quickly rotate drones out to the other base and then you're still kind of okay there as the queens transfuse each other up and they're going to stay very safe. And uh, as all of this goes down, Bunny is just waiting for his 1-1 upgrade, some medevac, and maybe he can start pushing. But it already feels like Reynold just has so much moving around the map and he is just staying on Ling Bane as well, not decking up into anything on the lair. So pure Ling Bane, very counter-attack heavy, very swarmy, and really going to test Bunny a little bit in terms of just controlling these fights because if Ling Bane gets out of hand, it's going to be everywhere. You're going to get overwhelmed, and that's something you can't allow to happen. It's going to be a bit scary. I mean, a little bit of mistake there from Rainer to start his plus one melee a fair amount later than his plus one carapace, and that's on top of being so far behind Bunny's upgrades. But he's going to set up these counter attacks, these run buys, and they are going to work by the looks of it. That is just a lot of Lings. Two Banshees help out a bit. But not really, that's not really the forte. They went up against Roaches more than they do Lings, but a nice spot for the Marines, a siege tank. Kind of perfectly timed there for Bunny, who had just enough, and he's continuing his attack on Rainer's, well, fifth base, actually. Decides he can't get it, he's gonna pack up and go home before he's surrounded, and he is gonna be able to do that. He's losing a handful of Marines. It's the one good thing about obviously playing against Masling Bane is like, there's nothing that really shoots down your medivax, right? So. You can keep on dropping for a long time. You can lift up and get out of there as long as you have enough medivacs to cover your army. So it makes a lot of the moves across the map that much less permitted in terms of losing stuff. Of course, it's still committed because the counterattacks may hit you and they may hit you hard. Raynor now is going to move into lair tech and it is going to be that typical hydrogen because, hey, Raynor, he really kind of designed the ZVT lurker style, right? And <laughs> that's what we know he's so good at. He made it work when a lot of players couldn't. A lot of players then learn from him to figure it out and to make it pretty much one of the big meta games of today. It's kind of funny though, because I seem to recall Rainer saying never again, never again, lurkers. But uh, yeah, but he says that about everything. He says I never know, again, right? muters. You know, at some point he probably said <laughs> never again am I making lings, and he's like, huh, right? Maybe, maybe they're actually kind of okay. It's exactly, it's exactly what I was gonna say. He says that about almost everything. <laughs> never again am I gonna play Zerg. All right, okay. <laughs> Bro, this is pretty hard. Never mind. Um, yeah, there is another attack headed towards the fourth this, this time, which actually doesn't have a lot of creep spread, surprisingly. And uh, Rainer actually having a little bit of trouble, finds which of Banelings has them canceled. He's trying to set up for another concave on top of this army. But does he actually have enough units rolling forward to the Banelings? Very vulnerable. He's going to have to go off creep to actually reach onto these Marines. And those tanks, they're looking for the perfect shots. This guy is surprising he didn't have creep up this avenue, right? Like he's got creep right. everywhere else. But Bunny has found the one place he can take advantage of there not being creep, and he's making the most of it. This base is very low. He just needs to fight his way through these few banelings, and realistically, that goes down, and there it is. It does fall. Now there's a flanking happening, but Marine's already pulling quite far back. He'll give up the siege tanks. That's part of the trade he just has to make, but he can maintain a lot of the Marines, and that's nice, at least. Now he's going to counterattack on the bottom left side. The only thing is, obviously, you don't want to let your tank account fall too much, especially once Lurkers on the way, because you want to have the tank out into high enough to stop the Lurkers from just running into you and sieging up on top of the army. Yeah, that's the real worry. I mean, he's starting to transition into a couple more Marauders as he gets his four bases and eight barracks up, but then I don't see a, a second tank on the way, so not much production there. I mean, it still is a decent move, and he still has a you know a handful of tanks. He's been leading at home, making sure that the run buys aren't ultra effective. So it's it's all right, but it's a good point to keep in mind as the game goes on. Planetary is set up. Bunny so far uh, going toe to toe with Rainer here. Really not anyone getting huge leaps and bounds ahead of each other. But we're not to lurkers yet. <laughs> we're gonna see what happens when those lurkers are fully upgraded. 
I'm just surprised there's no second factory. Like, I know he's just on ARAX and all that production is good. I'm just... The second factory seems like such a natural thing to add on now as I'll just meet up for a second. Daily fire alarm check, you know, that's all. Oh, I was wondering. Um, but all right then. So while he deals with the fire alarm, we got ourselves a little bit of a battle, but it's not going to go so well. Rainer was going into quite the concave, up a ramp, up a choke, off of creep. Pretty much the worst possible situation and realized that, that maybe wasn't a great idea. That didn't work out. Going to have to abandon ship on that fifth base after losing his fourth. Guys, that fourth actually did go down the handful of bio units where they were picked up and left. So Rainer, I mean, he's going to be able to replace this because there haven't been so many trades. There still is a bit of a bank accrued from Rainer having 95 drones when they were mining. But it's something that he can't, you know, allow to continue happening, especially if Bunny's going to go ahead and, and do a good job of expanding himself. So far, two extra command centers looking to perhaps take bottom left and middle right at the same time. Although middle right actually is covered by creep spread, so I don't know how likely that's going to be. He's going to have to clean that up. Yeah, no, it's it's um, that's the one thing that's so crazy. The creep is all around the map, but again, only in like a couple of different lines, right? There's still space for Bunny to move around a bit, perhaps, and. He is starting to push it back. He really is adding on the command centers, and he's ready just to play the later stages. He's not afraid of just saying, oh, okay, this is going long. Let's take, you know, expansions. Let's get myself my ghosts up and really be able to fight against those lurkers. He's going to cancel that base on the bottom side again, and now he's also dropping in the main base. And dare I say that Raynor is kind of being pulled apart a little bit here because he is kind of all over the place. He is pushing around up here as well. There's an attack on the left side, so Bunny's also taking damage. He needs to scan to really get rid of these lurkers. Now he's getting oh. blind and clouded. He's just going to sit in that. No, he's going to stem through zombie group. Try to fight the lurkers. I mean, this is just a mess on both sides of the map. Yeah, I think a mess really does actually describe that battle. That was a weird one, but it is continuing on. A single lurker with like one <laughs> HP is saving the day because of a lack of scan, I suppose. Finally, he's got one. He's going to clean that up as Rainer does clean up the main base, but only after losing a decent amount of drones and the defenses that are set up there. He's also lost control of his fourth base, and Bunny is actually taking this momentum and absolutely running with it. His tanks are sieged up. His bio is running a little thin, however, so I do believe he's going to have to be pushed back eventually, and a good pair of bomb to try and capture those medevacs too. But Bunny is not stopping. He does have his other fourth, I guess, at this point. His would-be fifth. His upgrades are finishing, and he has got a drop on top of Rainer's third, fourth, whatever it is. The point is, he's going to lose a couple more drones. Yep. A couple more drones going down. I mean, he just has money he can't spend in the bank, right? Like, a thousand minerals is just not going anywhere. And that's a big part of the problem. Just you don't have the lava because you lost a base or two extra. Now he's trying to morph Bane's top right side, but they just start. So if Bunny finds them, yep, they're just going to get cancelled. And this top right base goes down. And the exact same issue becomes more of an issue for Raynor. Bunny really is just all over the map right now. And he is absolutely just... He shut Raynor down. He dealt with the counters well enough while putting enough damage out himself. And now Raynor stands in a really tough position where... He kind of needs to slow the game down a lot, but he can't even really afford the lurkers to, to properly set up a defensive slowdown positions. I think that's really where it went terribly wrong for Rainer. It was already an impressive game for Bunny before that, but I think when he did the counter, plus his lurkers got found out before they were done. I mean, imagine if there were seven lurkers during that entire awkward phase where Bunny didn't quite have a scan mm -hmm. and then get blind and clouded. I mean, his, his army's dead by then. But instead it was, you know, two or three, and he was able to clean that up, and then three more were able to be uh, canceled, actually. So that that's really where things went absolutely wrong for Rainer, uh, to the point where I do believe that Bunny's going to be winning this game. He just has so much momentum. He's all over the map, getting another base kill to yeah. drop in the main. And Rainer apparently lost his Lurger Den, so he hasn't been able to rebuild these units that could stay in one place and defend very heartily. He hasn't been able to do it. He's had to respond, and he's not responding fast enough. Another base goes down, this time his main, so he's got the triple expand at this point. Yeah, you know, he actually only has, well, a, a hatchery and a hive still standing. He actually just doesn't have a way to produce units at this stage, right? He has two sets of injects. There's even a couple of Marines over here just kind of, you know, casually going in to stim down another drone. A tank that's going to get picked off in the center, but the damage is already done at this stage, right? Bunny's gone up to five bases, and Reynolds in recovery mode. But he's not going to be given that chance. Yes, Bunny lets up the pressure for a moment, only to regather and push again. And with a push that this time could really be deadly, Raynor has to really lean heavily on these lurkers. If these lurkers don't do well defensively right now, this is pretty much a done deal in terms of where this game is going. A couple of Vipers are out. They might help as well, but he needs these lurkers. He needs them in position, and he needs them there now. So he gives up this right side base already, and we'll see where he tries to hold. 
If you have this base, you would assume that the top right also gets taken down, but maybe not. Bunny, he really wants to end the game before these lurkers get up into really scary numbers, but... I mean, it's going to take a little while longer, going to take a little bit of patience, since now Rainer has seven Lurkers and a couple of Vipers, and he has at least one of the Lurker upgrades, which is the range, before that Lurker den died. So we will need to add on the uh, the Speed Burrow as well, when he can afford it, but that's actually a big problem now. Um, certainly mm -hmm. he's been lacking gas for a while, and then has to build Hydras, then Lurkers, plus whatever upgrades. I guess the good news is there, he does have 2-3 against Bunny's 3-3, three, three, but... He's contained. He's just desperately trying to get a base mining. Yep. Yeah, he's, he, where, where do you even go, right? I mean, you take this bottom side base and you try and hold that, but you just know that that's the next place that Bunny's going to be attacking into. He's already here, and he might clean up this wave, but then there's going to be reinforcements. You still have the army on the right you have to keep an eye on and uh, make sure he doesn't advance further forward. Maybe if Bunny lets up that right side position, Reino can make use of the top right base, and that could be a positive. He's doing a good job of holding on, and that does scare me a little bit for Bunny, just because Raynor has been the player, if anybody, to, with Lurkers, turn ridiculous positions around. When he's losing a game, maybe not usually this hard, the Lurkers kind of bring him back into it. So, a little bit worried that Bunny is almost stalling here a little bit, but it is also to be expected when Raynor has less bases to work with, and Bunny's taking the right approach of just more command centers, more tanks, and just letting himself build up into a very strong future. On that point, though, I am a little worried that Bunny isn't adding additional technology. Um, at, you know, mm -hmm. when it's when it's working, it's fantastic. Just the, the massive amount of units trying to pull and, and uh, the Zerg apart when they're on lurkers. That if that's working, then fantastic. But as soon as they get to that point, especially when Rainer gets to that point, which is having enough lurkers to spread around and hold positions, you do usually want to talk about getting ghosts or adding in a couple of raiders for a surprise, something like that. Um, and, and Bunny's not doing that. So, I mean, again, the bio finds another hatchery and that actually distracts Rainer to maybe lose his lurkers, but no, saves them. He does have the burrow speed now as well, so that'll really help out. But the concave may be looking pretty good for Bunny. The rest of the army's very, very far away, so not gonna be here quite in time. Nope, just barely in time. But just enough lurkers to hold on to this mining base, man. He's down to one and a half mining bases, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So 56 workers might even be like too many drones. Yeah, no, he's, uh, his work count actually re reflects the base count, I suppose. As we do see just Bunny's still really pressuring this bottom side, and he's going almost all in on this bottom side now because he knows the right side isn't a threat for economy coming up anytime soon. Reynolds going to jump on this, and I don't mind it. Blinding clouds on the tanks. The reinforcements weren't really here yet for Bunny, and Reynolds is going to push this back with tanks up on that other side. That's where he can't fight just yet. He's going to need more Viper energy. And now Bunny is realizing, huh, maybe I should tech up a little bit, as you said. We actually mentioned a long time ago he added on the Ghost Academy, but he never made use of it because the game got out of control in his favor. But it is, like you say, getting to that point where slowing it down and just adding extra tech on is actually just a good thing because it's just going to guarantee you can fight properly against this Zerg army. So Ghosts, Liberators, whether they're for harassing or just holding a front line, these are all very positive additions. I think is only going to help Bunny have a much better time very soon. Just needs to be careful of these Lurkers here. He is going to stem down into them. Uh, but Kind of a mixed round of success. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of okay, you know, just when he gets a concave going. These lings are going to find that ghosts are in fact being made, and that should be a little bit scarier for Rainer. I think there was a point where he was just like, oh, hopefully this guy gets over eager and just throws a bunch of bio at me, but uh, Bunny is trying to improve his army. Blinding clouds work out fantastic. He saves all the vipers. Uh, the lurkers are going down though, and there's still enough bio up on the top to try with the reinforcements coming in to try and actually bust this position. Those Vipers, everything's gonna have to either, I think it's gonna have to retreat actually. The Lurkers try and, try and do it, but then decide, no, I, I, I can't stay here. And then yes, they do retreat, but retreat to what? <laughs> Four Hydras? Where's the rest of the army? There is none. Yeah, there's really not much here at all. And Bunny just found a way to fight it, right? He got up the extra tech, the Libs helped in that fight. The Ghost got a couple snipes off and it was just the difference he needed to overturn that army, to overturn that position. And that is going to be Bunny taking game number one of the series. Uh, kind of like we talked about, or at least I wanted to mention the pre-show, right? Like Bunny can be very good at just being everywhere. I think that's his one really good strategy. And that's what was very apparent in this game is that they got to a point where Reyno was just all of a sudden like, oh no, he's got units there. He's got units on the bottom left. He's got units top right. And now he's dropping my main base. And that was really where he fell apart. That was the, the breaking point of Reyno. And I think from that, we really saw just how good Reyno can be, right? He can say, right, I'm in like the worst position possible, and yet I'm still gonna hold on 
defend as long as possible and find a way to make this game close and force him to at least tech up. Because if Bunny didn't tech up, it's very possible Reynold maybe does overrun him one or two more times, gets an army advantage, and you never know what that can turn into when it comes across the map and counterattacks one of your bases as the Terran player. Yeah, exactly. It's something to be scared of for sure, but the bio basically ended up doing it at the end of the day. Um, does that happen again? Probably not, just because I think that Rainer is going to adjust and kind of remind himself, okay, like, okay, Bunny is, is someone, you know, a considerable foe here. And then also the map's going to be different. We're going on a Death Aura, which is going to be a much larger map, actually going from basically one of the shortest long sight submarine to the largest uh, map. So I think it's going to be different as far as, as Bunny keeping up the momentum, because honestly, the difference of like six seconds or whatever it is on the rush of these maps could have been those lurkers finishing in the top right when everything really went to shit for Raiders when he's, his base were going down and his lurkers were found out uh, as his run by only managed to get one planetary. So match all those lurkers done. He's probably holding like he did for the last four minutes, but with a superior economy and an actual army to work with. It's a, that's something to really consider. Not to mention this map also could just be where Rainer uh, showcases some more of the Ling Bane Ling Yuta obnoxious style, but we will see what his choice is. In the top left, already giving us a bit of a surprise here, he is Team Envy's Bunny. In the bottom right hand side, down a game, our Blue Zerg is Raynor. Okay, so Death Aura. Um, still think that, you know, my points are valid, but as soon as I thought of, of Mutas, I was like, well, maybe that's where Rainer actually tries to go for it. Uh, the one problem is, you know, something that we. You don't talk about you know too often but is definitely a concern is that this is going to be bad paying for both players right so we're playing on the north america server between a korean and a european and uh, at the same time that you know every race has their problems blah 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 taryn's gonna be like well i can't split that well in bio and and all that good stuff uh you know very understandably zerg players are like i don't know about going from mutas man if i'm late to responding to that second widow mine or the third or the fourth then then suddenly i'm I'm, I'm actually just dead because they've lost all my mutas. And that is a fair concern. And I guess it just depends on how they're feeling that day or how their internet's acting up that day. Uh, but Death War can be a very, as we've seen in the past, a, a map that gives us an expansive game where ping ponging left to right is of the utmost importance. Yeah, uh, and, and mutas control is just such a huge part of that because when you're ping ponging left and right, you, you use your mutas to make sure you can kind of create opportunities, right? You can pull the Terran away from one side to make those attacks left and right more effective or to make their, you know, their attacks weaker because they have to pull back to defend a bit. But then if you're kind of flying mutas into a main base, and like you say, you're late to respond, well, yeah, suddenly their attacks just powered up because they don't have to defend. And then, the, you know, <laughs> you send so much unit, so many units into the main to not get anything done. So, yeah, it'll be... I'm intrigued to see what Reynold does, because it, it did feel like he almost wanted to play just Ling Bane last time, right? He was not quick to go into Hydras or anything. But then at some point he was like, okay, actually, let's, let's get a Hydra den open. Let's switch it up a little bit. You can't really do that as easily with Mutalist, right? If you delay the Spire that long, it's like you almost delay it. And it's like you have less time to make use of the Mutalist. Because the earlier you get your Mutas out, the earlier they can harass and so on. So the better value you get from them over time. Whereas with Hydras, they don't really harass. So when you invest into the Hydras, they're just going to improve your army in that way. So it'll be interesting to see what Reynold kind of approaches with this time around, because if you wanted to just play Ling Bane and then change into Hydras last time, okay, sure. But if he wants to play Mutas, he has to make that decision early. When I saw that faster layer, um, and we're saying faster, not like as super fast, but just as a choice between some of the faster evolution chambers and the faster layers of kind of the, the big branches of the Zerg choices of a macro game. When I saw the faster layer i was i was honestly expecting some faster mutas right mm -hmm. um but instead it ended up being just like all out on the evolution chambers so uh perhaps you know more so thinking about getting overseers against the the banshees and getting faster for the hooks thinking that bunny might do a faster push but they actually ended up being banshees either way that's where a layer would definitely help not having to worry about those mutas but rather bane speed is very important uh overseers can be very important but it did feel like it overall like kind of turned the game a little bit awkward because he was dependent on these Ling Baneling uh, engagements, but with much, much later upgrades, especially because he also forgot plus one melee for a little while. So um, 
I mean, maybe Rainer's plan did get a little offset, but it was, I think, still more so about that that time where it was Bunny dropping all over the place and catching Rainer as he tried to transition. That was really the turning point that really made that game favorable for Bunny. Uh, I'm wondering if Rainer can get a uh, cleaner start here. It already doesn't look that fantastic because Rainer is getting a Baneling Nest at a pretty defensive timing, but Bunny's actually gone for a third CC build. So, you know, if you uh, if you could have you know, map hacks on, you could see everything. That's not really what you want to get. Yep. Yeah, the Baneling Nest just has no real usage here, right? Unless this turns into some kind of crazy three commands and a Hellbat attack, which we've seen a little bit of, but... This isn't really going in that direction for Bunny. He's already added on the stim pack. He's moving his third CC into position. He's very happy just playing straight into bio here. So he'll do that off of eight Hellions in the Liberator. So there's still some pressure he can apply. Yeah, Reynold just has a Baneling Nest he didn't really need. And he just have stuff set up to deal with this Liberator. At least Spore was in a really good position there. The Lib does get past, but obviously he already knows that it's there. So he can move the Spore to deal with it. And Hellions are just fighting the Queens, which is obviously not exactly ideal. Uh, they're unlikely to get any kills there, and the Liberator is not doing much either. Also, some lost mine time is going to go down. If this Queen gets another couple shots off, it just survives with such low health that it's <laughs> unlikely to get anything else done. Yeah, maybe it could try to escape and get repaired, but not going to do anything with that low of health. So the Hellions have not tried diving. They scan a couple of Creep Timbers, actually finding quite a few active Creep Timbers, and then Liberator does come oh. back in. Oh, well, look yeah. at that. We we're She got one more drone. Yeah, you it's know, to be wrong. fair, I feel like that queen should have maybe rallied. I just expected something behind that natural as well, right? Because you just know the lib is there. But yeah, one more drone, okay. I mean, considering it didn't get any drone kills until then, that's great. This is going to be a catch on the Hellions. And Raynor, really good at this, obviously. We saw it last game, too. Got a catch on the Hellions pretty early on. And yep, this is once again just going to be that map control from Bunny removed from the game and giving Raynor that much more control as he goes into that faster Spire. Will be behind on the upgrades this time with Evo Chambers only just coming up as the 1-1's one already underway for them. That is a very fast fourth base. That is a fourth before your third is saturated. Um, not not very common. We have been seeing, you know, push towards faster fourths, as in not, no longer many three base all lanes or eight racks all lanes or, or um, insistence on a three base setup, but th th this is fast. Um, so very, very macro oriented. And that's fine enough, uh, especially since Rainer has been able to identify this terribly quickly. Again, that Bailey Nest, we didn't necessarily need it. And then now I don't, uh, I think he's only got the fourth base information. He could use that though. I mean, if someone's getting this fast of a fourth base, their pushes aren't going to be, I think, super serial, super serious. Actually, hasn't seen it. That's problematic. It's, again, just like how much can he be greedy, right? He is up to 76 drones, five bases trying to get underway, and his mutas have started, but. Information is critical in StarCraft, and rainer has been missing out on it a little bit. Yeah, it just might mean that he's not as aggressive as he should be. We'll see how he approaches the Mutas once they're on the map. Obviously, they should just fly across the map, but maybe if you can force them to kind of pull back and help with this little Marine tank force on the right side, well, then you can pull the attention away from your fourth base and really get that established. Raynor's supply blocked as well. He is still going to send the Mutas across, but just into the third to begin with, the Marines are here. So they will chase the Mutas up into the main base, and that's maybe where Bunny will have a bit more problems. He's obviously up against, you know, no turrets just yet, so Reynor can really fly around and just find a few SCVs on every single mineral line. And on the way to, out to the right side, he's going to see the fourth base already in position. I mean, that's, uh, you know, if you're Reynor right now, you're like, oh, well, how, how almost? Like, you know, it's so early, like you mentioned. And it's in position, too. It's not like it's just in the bases building SCVs. It's on location ready to mine. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a lot of macro right there. But now Renner has some more information. And I guess talking about information, kind of neglected that Bunny had not scouted his opponent's build and maybe was thinking more about last game and how much his opponent uh, stayed on Ling Bane Ling very late to Hydra's even. So the Mutas this fast might have been a bit of a surprise, but I think in general you would expect Mutas with, with just that one caveat of just like, oh, are they, they feeling bad about the thing today? But now uh, it is going to be Muta play and it's going to be... Um, very scary. I mean, four base setup, easy enough to get. Bunny's already got it. He's got defenses. He's getting all of his production up and running. That's fantastic. But things are just getting started. You know, Rainer is setting up not just his own bases and his own economy on 98 Whoa. workers. Oh, loses two mutas there. Uh, and the Overseer. But 98 workers. Uh, he's also getting a lot of creep spread. He's going to take multiple bases so that a drop killing one won't be as big of a deal. 
and we'll see how much he can start to pull Bunny apart when Bunny reaches towards a, a would-be fifth, or would be expecting him to try to get a fifth. Yep, there's a fifth commence that's done just now, so yeah, definitely it feels as though Bunny will be pretty safe on four bases, and that just means that Reno for now hasn't got a choice, right, other than to build up, like you said, establish troop spread, and he's even going to tech up a little bit as well, Infestation Pit right away, and that's not something you see this quickly all of the time when you're playing with the Mutas. Sometimes you do stick on that Ling Bane Muta for a little while longer, but in a game like this where it's already four bases from the Terran, why are you, you know, why would you not tech up? Why would you not make your life easier? You know, going forward from here, as you see a couple add-ons picked off by the Mutas, they find an opening, and those are just the little things that will slow Bunny down that little further. Bunny, who's maxed out, by the way, do you think there's anything you can do here with 2-2? Two -two? He does have like a 30-ish army supply lead just through the virtue of Rain will have 103 drones. You'd think so. You'd think he would try and move out, but then again, um, with the way that he has been playing with his build, I wouldn't be surprised if he just kind of hopes to wear Rainer out and catch him doing an attack, but he shouldn't. So that could have been one of them, but Rainer pulls back and Bunny was well enough in position. Death Aura is just so hard to break anyone on those four bases once they're solidified. So it is more about the fifth or waiting for your opponent to move out and then run buying. He is once again getting a little bit damaged, running into a Thor when they should not have, but Rainer with now 103 drones. It's really channeling his inner Wings of Liberty right here. Uh, has a lot of economy to work with. He could replace a fair few mutas before he had to really uh, you know, cry tears about it. But now finally Bunny is pushing out and he's got a little bit of a push to the left and a little bit of a drop in the right and Rain is going to go through the middle. Not actually as vulnerable as he was hoping for. Yeah, Bunny had to get some units there. So now these mutas saw uh, Mira's actually not really anywhere too useful. They are going to win the fight against these Marines, but there's a push on the right side, there's a push on the left, and he has to deal with those at some point here as there are a lot of Banelings ready to go. He's got 65 Banelings on the map right now, and he's got some of them on this right side. Well, I mean, good split back by Bunny, but actually Mira's alone might just win this because there's not that many Marines and everything else then will just be overrun. He soaks up a lot of Bane shots though. Now the Banes on the left side make a move forward, but again, not really that effective to begin with. Bunny is pre-split, spread out. Reynold just goes straight back in production. He had almost 40 plus lava, I think, at some point here. So he really had Bainless crash in. He really had a lot to rebuild with, right? He was prepared to rebuild off of this. And that's exactly what he's doing. So no issues just yet as yeah, Bunny trades out. And don't get me wrong, he's trading well, but he's going to have to trade well against an economy like this one. And it's only getting more difficult. Now he puts that fifth base in location in the next couple seconds. He is going to have to be on more places off the map, so more places to defend while still trying to get successful attacks and harassment on the Zerg side. Exactly. The four bases were relatively easy, but the five base is going to be a bit hard, more difficult. And then the sixth is, you know, it's it's one of like the turning points of Death Or actually is that sixth, which we would expect maybe for Bunny to be uh, below his fifth, right? So he kind of continues the push and the expansion power. Um, we'll get to that in maybe a couple of minutes, though. But if he does get that up and running as a planetary, that's where we can see the tug of war as opposed to the moving left and right, left and right. But right now, it is a lot about mobility. Rainer is able to save his bottom left base once. Can he do it again? It's already injured. Wouldn't mind to get popped by the bailings before they can really do anything. But yeah, that hatchery was so low, it does just fall. Meanwhile, Rainer's trying to get some revenge, finding this before it's a planetary with some links that have 2-2. Two, two. Just barely don't have a Geno glands, but okay, well, that's, that's enough failings, I think. Yep, he's got it. Yep, that will do it, of course. I mean, it's always that scary part of you just gave up a lot of stuff to deny a base. Are you going to be in fear of a counterattack? And I think the reality is just no, there's so much creep on the map. How does Bunny get to any bases? Yes, he denies bottom left, but where, how does he get to anywhere else? Well, he kind of just doesn't, so... Yeah, Reynolds kind of flying behind this and now on his way to Ultra, so his army is improving. And we'll see just how well Bunny can match up against those Ultras as Marines do get here pretty quickly. And he's been very good at moving these Marines around. Like, it's very rare you've seen the Mutas get into like a mineral line and be undefended. Yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, been pretty good on the Marines defensively, but then uh, <laughs> they all got just, trapped in a corner. He just lost all the mutas to this Thor, by the way. This Thor okay. just killed every single mutalisk in the top side. So while Reynold looked as though he had the army of Bunny trapped on the left, he did. He didn't pay attention to his mutas at all. So now he's got no mutas on the map. And that actually could be an issue because suddenly you open up the possibility of dropping again as the Terran player. And maybe that could be something to be successful with when you're, you know, now the Zerg has these Ultras. They're a little bit clunkier to move around than just the Ling Bane. Reynold will have to spend some money on new Mutalists. And 
That's a pretty big expense right now. He's trading 8,000 resources uh, worse over the course of this game so far. That's fine as long as he keeps Bunny off the fifth base, but Bunny's going to attempt to take it on the left side now. And those meters were pretty trapped, but he could have tried magic boxing them and then moving over the Thor, right? But I was very much so paying attention to the army fight, which he is once again doing here through the middle of the map just before Kite is plating. So very awkward for those four two ultras. That's why they went down to the red so damn fast. And also before the other upgrade suit, it's actually a big anti-timing, to be honest. Through a choke as well, but Rainer does want to take an engagement before his hatchery gets demolished. It's pretty much brand new, and I'm afraid it won't actually happen. There's nothing protecting these Ultras, actually, yeah. so they get kind of easy to focus fire down one at a time. Actually, Rainer making a big mistake there. Wasn't paying attention, I suppose. I thought his Balings would come a little bit faster, but now his Balings are here. They'll be a little bit better on this choke defensively. That was a little awkward. It doesn't seem to matter so much. Maybe it does cause the space to be lost, but Rainer still dominates in that supply. Trying to split away desperately from those last couple of Banes. The final Ultra is about a full, but there's Mauling Bane coming through, and this Hatchery may very well survive. He did get a few Marines behind the Mineral Line, so they are actually going to get rid of quite a few drones. So damage being done, picking away at that Rainer economy, but Bunny is also extremely low on supply off of all of this. He did give up a lot of units going up that ramp, and there were a couple of Banelings that hit very well, and now he's going to lose SCVs too. One of the great things with Bunny this game is that actually he really hadn't lost like a ton of SCVs. You know, in a game like this where you've only lost 30 SCVs until now, that's really not as high a number as you might expect. It basically all came from that one Baneling bus on the uh, initial fifth base. Uh, so really you're in a position now where Bunny, not only have you let up your army supply, you're also losing the ability to rebuild that army supply. And obviously that also kind of applies itself with the lack of a fifth base. You still can't get that up and running. And that's what Reyno has just done really well in this game. Not let base number five go up. As long as that hasn't gone up, this has been kind of a, a perfectly fine situation for Reyno to play. Yeah, yeah, indeed. He tried to get one to the middle left, hoping that maybe all the attention was on the right, but that didn't work out either. So no fifth bases, no continued aggression while he also gets his economy up. And now he's going to lose his fourth. He's going to lose SCVs on the third base. The main might also be under attack. Like, this is, everything's happening at once. These mutas uh, are taking on missile turrets. They don't really have to, but I do think that uh, that's fine by now. Actually, that's a lot of yep. SCVs. You can kill all those. Yeah. No, the SCV count is dropping heavily. Only 37 left on the map. You know, I just mentioned before there's about 30 SCVs killed this game. Well, he just lost 26 extra. So, you know, his economy is being kept alive, and now it's just disappeared so quickly. And that's what happens in these games. You get... Everything falls apart very quickly. When you lose one base, suddenly you're kind of caught defending that late, and that means you're late back to the other side, and well, Reynolds just really kind of ran Bunny around the map the last couple of minutes, and now he's going to find an orbital over here, so Lings will run by to defend it, so Reynolds just on top of everything, and Reynolds still with Bunny in the bank. You know, Bunny wanted this kind of game, though. You know, he set up to play very passively, to play it late. He wanted it to get to this stage. He just couldn't handle Reynolds once it got here. Yeah, he was he, he's the one that kind of set this this tone, this pace, and then couldn't actually follow through towards the end when it came to continuing to expand and continuing to be maxed out for these engagements. He's always a little bit lower, and Rainer was always uh, able to remax with so much just room on the map. All the creeps are all the bases that he could afford to give up because he had so much cash, and he is uh, really taking control of this game. Bunny not willing to give up quite yet. I, I think he knows the writing is on the wall. Down the three base is actually only two orbitals, excuse me. And that's that's usually, you know, unless you know your opponent's also on two bases. But I think if we checked Bunny's vision, he would basically see nothing, which just means that's a bad sign. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> yeah. see all the bases that the Rainer has taken. Um, but uh, yeah, not willing to give up this one quite yet. One last to raw with Mass Marauder, would of mine. Uh, that's okay, that's it. GG. Rainer takes game two and we'll tie up the series. Tying it up 101, uh, looking a little bit better this game than the last game. Really had it under control, really kind of knew what he wanted to do and he really went through there. He went out and he did it, right? He really kept Bunny back. He knew what his win condition was, which was just don't let Bunny get a fifth base and I'm completely fine. And he really played that part of it perfectly, right? He gave up units when he needed to. He wasn't afraid to give up the base on the bottom side that one time he had to as well. And he just, he just played it out well, kept Bunny back, and made it difficult for him to uh, to really kind of play the game he wanted to play. Yep, that's the Rainer we were expecting. We're going to see how it turns out for Game 3, though, in this first match of the day. Who's going to come out to the winner's match? Is it going to be Rainer or Bunny? You're going to have to wait to find out as we go to a quick break.
We're heading into game three of Bunny versus Rainer on a Pillars of Gold for the final map of the first series. Um, Bunny, I mean, getting a map like he did in the first game was a big surprise, just how well executed it was. But Rainer did do kind of what I feel like he does best, which is collect himself and get some serious revenge, really look overpowerful, like OP. There we go, that's what I'm looking for, OP in the second game around. So can Bunny bring it back? Maybe change up the way that he's played? Very passive on Death Aura, and I feel like he got punished for it. He was, wasn't he? I feel like Pillars of Gold maybe plays a little bit more into his favor once again. But first, let's do some intros. We can chat more about it. In the bottom left-hand side, the Blue Zerg tying us all up here. One to one. It is Raynor. In the top right, as the Red Terran, it is Bunny. No, I, I do feel like this map is... I feel like against Raynor. Like, I feel like Death Thor is a good map for Terran players versus Zerg. I feel like it's actually just a fun back and forth map. But I feel like Raynor is very good on Death Aura. Whereas Pillars of Gold, just because it is a bit shorter, I know it's good for Zergs running by and stuff as well. I just feel like this is the map where Bunny can do a little bit more of what he did on Light Shade, you know? It's the same idea of the Zerg can go left or right with bases, so he was very good at denying those with moves across. And... I just feel like a more aggressive stance might be might be the way to go again back to that game number one instead of just the passivity that he showed in game number two allowing Reynold to get set up and Reynold to basically just make the very simple decision of cool i just don't fight unless he tries to take another base in which case i take a big fight because there's no way he can have enough on the map in the right places because i dominate the map with creep spread yeah, it's always, it feels so unfair sometimes when we're like, well, the, the not Zerg player chose a four base build, so, you know, what do you expect? But uh, I would say against Zerg, especially and on, on a huge map where they can kind of take those those dangerous trades because they have that lower army supply, but it's it's so far out into the map that they have time to rebuild. It, it is just like, okay, well, you better be really confident in your own macro. In your own late game, are you going to get beat down? Which is what happened. I mean, Bunny did play a very fantastic late game four base style, uh, eventually on light shape, but only after getting a bit of momentum with some some more harassment options, kind of pushing uh, Rainer a little bit off his game with some later upgrades, getting started and that type of stuff. It was just so different. Even though Rainer didn't get the full information, full picture of what was happening in game two until a bit later, didn't know about the super fast third CC or the uh, super fast fourth until it was on location. I mean, he still was able to be like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna continue what I'm doing, which is building more drones and, and, and getting more creep spread. And Bunny didn't do anything about it until he was hitting a, a fifth base, actually was one of his first pushes. So that's gonna always put anyone in an uncomfortable position. And I do think that Bunny, while he could do a third CC building and I wouldn't mind, although he's not this game, I wouldn't mind that. I, I just don't wanna see that super fast fourth, I guess is, is really where I'm coming from and that at uh, waiting until he's fully maxed out to actually do something. Uh, but it is a double gas, so we're going to see the starport, and then we'll see what happens beyond that. So Rainer was, I mean, he's been playing actually pretty safe. So I, yeah. I mentioned the Baneling Nest last game. He's also been drone scouting. That's, that's what I was going to say, right? Like, I was going to say maybe Pillars of Gold is the map where Bunny can be more aggressive, but I don't think he can be just because, like you say, Rainer has been playing safe. That Bane Nest has come up at the right time every game to stop any kind of a Hellbat attack, right? So... At that point, what do you really do as Bunny to, to kind of switch it up and to be aggressive? Well, honestly, not really very much. I think if he goes Banshees here, that's probably one of the best ways to be aggressive because there's no just clean shutdown of Banshees. Yes, you can set up well against them, but it still comes down to the Zerg control versus the Terran control, right? So I like that. and I think that may just be Bunny's best shot at getting some damage done early. Um... But yeah, it's it's funny because as soon as Reno just opens Baneliness like the first two games in a row, like in four minutes or so, it just shuts down so many build order choices of the Terran because all of a sudden they're like, huh, but well, if I can't go for like a Hellbat build, I'm kind of stuck on a 3cc or a Banshee opening. And then Reno will scout and he'll give up the Overlord. But if Reno just feels though like, you know, it, basically if Reno's idea is just deny a Hellbat attack or scare him off a Hellbat attack and then I can just play, you know, an anti-Banshee build, something like this fast lair, then Reynolds probably kind of controlling the way that this game is going early. And again, just fast lair, goes straight into that Baneling Nest after the lair this time. So a little bit greedier than what we've been seeing. And that's maybe even kind of a play on what we've just seen in the earlier games where he now knows 
it's unlikely Bunny's going to get that aggressive before the Bane and Nest is done even a bit later here. Un it's unlikely, he hasn't done it in the previous games, and also my Overlord got a pretty good scout into the, the main install that it was into Banshees, which doesn't negate the option of also adding on an Armory, but just is a, like a, one of the, the less used Hellbat attacks. So, it's, um, it's a good start for Rainer, we'll see if he can carry through. I mean, I thought, you know, the, the Light Shade game seemed like it was going pretty good. Oh, well, oh, hold on here, the Hellings almost getting trapped in that high ground, barely running away. Um, but I thought it was going pretty well for Rainer, right? Because he had uh, taken care of the Hellions. He had got those Lings into the SEV line in the early game. And the Banshees weren't finding any damage. But that was still the game that Bunny ended up winning. So uh, let's see if Rainer can, I mean, do similar things then actually play out the rest of the game as well as we know that he can. So far, so good on the defense. The Banshee already getting very, very injured. All those Queens there with an Overseer is going to happen. Banshees go down pretty quickly. And the Hellions... Yeah, maybe not going to sacrifice themselves this time around. Be a bit more careful with that. Yeah, no, it's actually the first game where the Hellions haven't really been like fully caught, right? You know, I feel like in game one he lost all but two or three of them. Game number two was a very similar affair. This time keeping the Hellion count up, so keeps that throughout on the map a little bit longer at least. Um, maybe gives them some options as once again Bunny will take the lead on the upgrades. And Raynor just at bailing speed, not making a decision on actual lair tech just yet mm. on Spire versus Hydroden. So just sticking around on Ling Bane just yet. And this may also be something to do with the servers. Uh, they played game one on West and game three is once again on the West. So it's when Raynor has slightly worse ping, right? So maybe he just feels that Ling Bane heavier style initially is a good way to defend the initial attacks. It's a little bit less micro intensive because you are just swarm with a lot of units, right? You set up the kind of the, the flank and that's your initial kind of, you know, that's a lot of your initial micro done. So maybe just negating that a little bit until it gets to the later stages when those what could be like micro errors due to playing on West, maybe a little bit less uh, impactful. Yeah, that's a fair point. It's definitely something good to bring up. And he goes keeping spike, track, so but... never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, still, I like, I, I still think that there's something to be said about the initial, the build here is a choice to go into the that layer, layer, yes, pretty fast, but then to hold off on the spire. I mean, it does give him a lot of safety in terms of dealing with those banshees, which he knew were going to be on the way. He had also still having some decent upgrade timings because they came down before the spire and then the spire. So. Yeah, he won't have Nita's to handle the medevacs. This will be a situation where Bunny could just like pick up and leave, but he's going to have some difficult folks, and he should have just enough to work with with that bailing speed, especially when he's looking up a surround right now uh, to make the hold happen. And then we can talk about you know potential ping issues with the Nita's. But that's for a little later on. Queen does go down, but that's not really the defense. Hatchery's actually going to go down as well. Of course, yeah. to cancel that, not quite confident enough to take on the army. Yeah, it's also now 1-1 one, one upgrades against 0-0, zero, zero, but the Marines just got forced into the medevac, so never mind so much about that. You will unload on the low ground, just kind of behind the tanks. I don't mind it, especially when you've got the upgrade lead. This is likely Reno's going to chase that deep against you. There's obviously Reno just a weak moment. He's stacking up money, waiting to build Mutalisks, as Bunny very quickly into Widowmines this game. So he really did stay on tanks for a very long time back on Lightshade. And obviously Reno moved into Mutas here much more quickly than he moved into Hydras on Lightshade as well. But yeah, again, into drone closing just a second factory really quickly. Bunny really bringing a different style himself. Just drops up into this main base. Double score going to make it difficult getting these medevacs out of here. But they're honestly going to trade okay initially. Things running through. And now going to start cleaning up. But even then, the Marines going to sit in the corner, clean out the links. And it's only going to be the Banelings that finally force a lift. And even then, the medevac survives and brings the Marines elsewhere. We got a Muta there. Uh, big distraction so that the fourth base goes down. Rainer is getting his fifth base mm. elsewhere, so that'll be his new fourth. But this is a, a really good move that I do believe that Rainer was specifically trying not to let happen, right? He had double score in the main, and his Mutas were so close to being perfectly timed so that he pushes the tank push back and then has them in time for the drops that could commence. And it was it was so close to being perfect, but not close enough. So Bunny still gets a lot of damage done uh, as far as like actually getting things killed but then also just the amount that he had to keep uh rainer had to be kept back at home finally getting some revenge though moving over to the other side of the map quick enough to find no missile turrets actually done and ready to go so some serious revenge being had that's a decent amount of scds killed barely getting that one missile turret up but then again bunny is once again going to be able to cancel this uh, supposed fifth base it was the fourth at one point and gonna yeah. continue clearing up creep as well yeah, cut off the, the fourth and what is now again, like you say, the fifth, essentially. 
is nice, but then if Reynolds is just on four bases and he's dealing damage, uh, then maybe Matt's uh, gonna merge the Mutalisk. Maybe want to turn away. He's focused on clearing up this army, but this has reminiscent kind of uh, moments of kind of what happened on Death Aura, right? Where he was focused on clearing up an army, and he just kind of left his Mutas fight in a Thor, and now this time he leaves the Mutas fight in Marines. That's not good, and that's expensive because you don't want to be spending. I mean, he barely has that much gas to rebuild Mutas. He's rebuilding four of them. You know, he's just started 2-2 recently, so he isn't rich when it comes to gas. He's only going to have 9 meters on the map, and that really isn't enough to be scary when there's maybe a Thor or 2 at home. Turrets are up and defensive as well. 9 meters is like, oh, I just got my Spire finished territory. Not 10 minutes into the game, this is my second and third round of meters. You should be on like 20 plus by now or so if you're going to commit into them that heavily. That really is just a shame, and that really does just hold him back from where I imagine he wants to be. Once again, having problems with his minerals as well. I mean, he doesn't get a macro hatchery. He's trying to get expansions. So you have six bases. That's as good as having five plus a macro hatchery. And you can't get all those bases up and running. That's been an awkward point for a couple of these games. He's been able to clean this up, it looks like, coming in from the backside as well. He is on top of those tanks. Not much Marine to force left over. But Bunny, it's, this is what's happening on Lightshade. He's so good about having just like an attack like quote unquote after a while and then actually hitting with a bigger better attack on the uh, the right side which is going to grab a base and Rainer's really struggling to keep up or actually have the engagements on the other side of the map because yeah the mute account's been dwindling you can't actually threaten Bunny and be like no you stay at home like you're going to get mm -hmm. the same amount of damage done to you if you do this to me he's not really he's done that once but not uh not recently Maybe he can clean this up and that'd be nice, but he's got to be, once again, very careful about his mutas, almost running into a lot of Marines and a Thor. Yep. No, no, no. He's he's in a lot of trouble, right? He's uh, definitely, I mean, he's down in supply, he's down in army, work accounts are even. Reno just doesn't have what he needs. And at this point, you see Bunny is setting up a base on the right-hand side, so he's going to have an easy, even easier push down this right side to continue through. He's got catching a few banes before they're done. Mutas are going to show up, but the SCVs instantly start repairing zombie groups. So this turret will not go down. And that just means the Mutas get pushed back for zero gain, just taking damage. And obviously, Bunny's still advancing down this bottom side. Reynolds still doesn't have a fourth base up at this point. And it's only going to get worse over time as yeah, Bunny continues to pick up excellent trades. And Reynolds with the Mutas is finally picking off a few reinforcements, at least finally getting some value out of them after they've uh, just run headfirst into missile turrets and not made any progress for a while. Rainer, dude, I think he actually needs to take a fifth base over to the left as well, but he's not thinking about it. He's trying to get enough banelings to conquer this force, and uh, his muta is trying to find some damage. Now return home, but against two Thors, they're not really going to be able to help out too confidently. He's starting to lose creep spread in the middle of the map, which was kind of the one thing that was helping out. At least that was starting to approach Bunny's base, but now that's also being taken care of. Well, one more scan would do it, but I guess now he has vision. That's the good news. Finally, a fifth base comes down to the middle left. Rainer might be able to get maxed out once in this game. And then maybe he can take a really convincing engagement and get some momentum there. But he is struggling to get to that point. He's, I feel like it's just fortunate that Bunny isn't, you know, immediately moving out now that he's maxed. And okay, the mute is actually finding another good time. This what happened on that third base, not happening on the fifth base. A bunch of SEDs cancel all the missile turrets and, and does keep Bunny at home, which Rainer definitely needs him to be. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's finally like a win for Rainer as these the, the Thor is actually doing really well against the Mutas. They felt like they stayed clumped up like way longer than usual here as now there's units that are going to try and trap them in and stop them from escaping and can they get up to the top side? Looks like the Mutas are probably just about out of there. Loses one more and the Overseer in the process. The Marines are still chasing, mind you, and yeah, these mutas are really being chased away. Well, I mean, in Reynolds' point of view, at least this is kind of nice because then it gives him time. You know, he's finally up to five bases. Is it soon enough? Is it something he can work on? Maybe. It's, it's going to be tough still. Remember, he's still just on Ling Bay Muta. He's not made any approach toward Hive Tech. And that's going to be his biggest issue for a long time now, right? Is that he's still just on a mid-game composition. Well, Bunny doesn't need to move on from a mid-game composition. His composition is better when they're maxed out in oh. these scenarios. And that is a game the Muta's not finding what anything that they want to find. Yeah, um, this is going to get cleaned up. But on the left side, far more important, the base of Rainer is going to get cleaned up. He's going to be sent back to four bases. He's never really been able to utilize as many drones as he's made. He want to use when you're playing this type of style. Now that his Muta counts have been decimated once again, 
Uh, that is no longer as much of a threat. Down the 15 is like an okay number, but certainly not enough to take on as many missile turrets as Bunny has been getting. Struggling to actually defend his fourth base as well because creep spread has been just minimal around his base is the most important part. So Brainer, I mean, on the cusp of losing this game, unless he can get his momentum back here, which seems unlikely. Planetary is done, missile turrets are done, and Rainer is trying desperately to find a position to take on this type of army. But even if he takes it on, it's so beefy. It's got Marauders, it's got Thors, that it's not going to be a very good trade for Rainer. Nope. It's, it's really not, and that's the issue, right? Because you can't take good trades, and if you can't take good trades, you need better economy. You don't have a better economy, so eventually you just get whittled down, and you just kind of get dragged out of the game. He's 10,000 resources lost worse off than Bunny is this game, and so Bunny just keeps on pushing, right? Every time Raynor cleans up an army, there's another army coming. It's not like it's just like a trickling in of Marines. It's like there's a Thor, there's Widow Mines, there's Marauders and Medivacs, and this is going to come around the left-hand side here, and it's just going to run in and Again, go for this base, and once he's done this left side, that bottom right base is going to become a target yet again. I mean, Bunny knows what he's doing. He's just playing this, the speed at which he needs to just to close this out, and Reynor just, I just don't know what Reynor really does. I mean, he basically hopes to get one amazing engagement at some point and then capitalize from there, but it needs to be so good, it seems unrealistic. Yeah, exactly. Bunny has been playing a fantastic game, but Rainer doesn't quite seem to have the, the magic stuff that <laughs> he usually does in the whole best of three. Death Aura went really well for him, but I guess that was also Bunny playing uh, a much more patient, passive style. When it comes to actually defeating a Terran who's uh, this much multitasking, this aggressive, on one of the shorter maps in that map pool, Rainer is struggling, which doesn't bode well as the rest of the group is Terrans. Like, this is the matchup he's playing today. So he's got to uh, either bring it back right here, right now, when down 40 supply, only barely on five bases, doesn't seem likely, uh, or start thinking about those next EVTs and trying to wrap his head around uh, this matchup once again, which he's usually been fantastic at, but Bunny is absolutely trying him. So the game's not quite over yet, but man, it's it's hard not to say that it is. There's like no creep spread, very few units. The Rainer doesn't want to give up yet. Yeah, no, he's... Uh... <laughs> He'll stay in the game for as long as long as he can. I mean, to be fair, right? Well, I say it only takes, but I mean, if you get some really good vein connections at the same time, maybe you hit a run by and you deny a base, you know, the game can start to turn around. It's just Bunny is continuing to do the right things. He's not letting Valence connect. He is still multi-pronged attacking, right? He's coming in this bottom right side now, denying another base. He's actually going to target that. He doesn't care if he's surrounded by Lings. Denying the base just does so much damage to Reno. He just can't afford to rebuild a base even at this stage. He's so weak on mineral counts. Now he's losing overlords as well. He's going to be supply blocked below, almost below 100 supplies. So he's just in trouble all around. He's going to lose the Baneling Nest and the natural expansion. And, well, have you ever tried playing pure Ling against uh, Marine Marauders EG? I feel like it doesn't go very well. Well, when I play the Marine Marauder, I'm pretty sure it goes well for the Zerg. Whenever I'm the Zerg and play it against <laughs> Terran, yeah, yeah, it doesn't go very well. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is game over, man. Sub 100 supply, but with the knowledge that your opponent's actually on five bases with plenty of production, you know the game is over. But it's it's difficult to digest. Raynor is supposed to win this series. We were so confident, I was so confident, but all of us said that Raynor was going to win. Uh, and I'm sure Raynor was thinking the same thing. Bunny, hell, might have also been like, you know, it's going to be tough. I'm going to really try, have to try hard here. But he has done a wonderful job. It is an upset. Rainer is forced to tap out. Bunny with the 2-1 to start off Group C is going to now be waiting in the winner's